Everyone, good morning. You have reached the Human K channel. Today, we're going to learn more about the interesting world of social exchange theory. Since it was made in the 1950s, this theory has become a very important part of social behavior studies. SET, which stands for Social Exchange Theory, gives us a way to understand how complex social networks work. It has been used to explain both utilitarian and sociological views of partnerships. John Thibault, George Homans, Peter Blau, and Harold Kelly's early work was a big part of how this theory came to be. They focused on the psychology of small groups and the relationships between people and communities. Homans looked at relationships from the point of view of how they support each other, while Blau looked at them from a technical economic point of view. Thibault and Kelly looked at how people make decisions in groups and made models to predict what will happen in relationships. The four main parts of social behavior that social exchange theory explains are reinforcement tools, benefits, resources, and interdependence. Reward systems encourage people to connect with others, while resources include both social and financial benefits. The idea of social trade is based on the economic concept of weighing costs and benefits. In a friendship, both the pros and cons are taken into account. Individual norms of fairness affect how people think about how fair costs and benefits are. Social systems and social capital have an effect on how people interact with each other. Social capital includes norms, rules, information channels, expectations, and responsibilities, among other things. These things can affect how social relationships grow and how they turn out. In social exchange, the idea of reciprocity is very important. It makes promises to each party, which encourages long-term cooperation and loyalty. Humans have evolved to act in ways that are likely to get them what they want, even if they don't always get what they want right away. A two-step behavioral model can help you understand how people talk to each other. Negative actions are costly, while positive actions are worth it. In fairness, actors do good or bad things in return. A string of good conversations can lead to long-term engagement and cooperation. The effective theory of social exchange looks at the emotional side of social exchange and how it affects how people feel about and act around social things. It tries to find out what makes people feel good or bad about things for a long time after talking about them with other people. Let's look at Lawler's work on commitment in social relationships to help us understand this idea better. Lawler came up with five theories that build on previous research and shed light on the effects of positive feelings caused by social interaction. First, social exchanges that make people feel good about themselves make them more likely to stick together. This means that when people feel good in their interactions with others, it strengthens their sense of unity and connection. For example, when a coworker helps you with a hard job and you feel grateful and appreciative, this makes you feel more like a part of the team and makes it easier for everyone to work together. Second, when people feel good about each other, they are more likely to work together. When people feel good about themselves, it makes them more likely to work together in the future. For example, if you have a good time working on a group project with a classmate, you may be more likely to work with them on future tasks because the good feeling you got from the first time you work together encourages you to keep working together. Third. Social exchange can lead to an exchange of benefits that doesn't have to be forced. People who feel good about themselves are more likely to help or support others without asking for anything in return. For example, if a friend helps you out when you're having a hard time, the good feelings you get from that exchange may make you want to help other people in need, even if you don't have to. Fourth, good feelings make people more loyal in social trade. When people feel good about a person or group, it makes them more loyal and committed to keeping that relationship going. For example, if you get along well with your coworkers at work and feel emotionally connected to them, you may feel very loyal to your team and company, which can lead to a long-term commitment. Lastly, positive feelings in social interactions make it easier to forgive. When people feel good about themselves, they are more likely to forgive others for mistakes or bad things they have done in the past. For example, if someone makes a mistake that hurts you by accident, you may be more patient and understanding in that situation if you have had good experiences with that person in the past. These assumptions show how positive feelings affect the way people interact with each other, such as by encouraging solidarity, collaboration, non-obligatory exchange, loyalty, and forgiveness. By knowing the role of emotions in social exchange, we can see how positive emotional experiences can shape relationships and change how people feel and act around social objects. 
Positive or negative global feelings can be used as different kinds of rewards and punishments. These feelings cause people to interact or not interact further. The mind works hard to figure out where these feelings come from. Effective attachment is the emotional connection or bond that people form with social things like other people, social relationships, events, or social networks. How stable and in control people believe the causes of their feelings regarding these social things to be can have an impact on this attachment. Effective attachment is likely to happen when social things are seen as stable and controllable sources of positive feelings. In other words, people develop a sense of attachment to these social objects if they think that their good feelings are always and regularly linked to them. Let's look at an example to show what I mean. Imagine someone who has a small group of close friends with whom they often do fun things like go out to dinner, watch movies, and have deep talks. These good things always make people feel happy, at ease, and like they fit. The person starts to associate these good feelings with their group of friends, seeing them as the stable and predictable source of their good feelings. As a result, the person forms an emotional bond with their social group, feeling close to them and appreciating the connection. On the other hand, negative feelings linked to social objects can also lead to effective attachment. But in this case, the causes of the negative emotions are seen as stable and uncontrollable. Let's consider an example. Let's say someone works in a place that is dangerous and very stressful. They always feel bad emotions like anxiety, frustration, and sadness because their work is hard, their co-workers don't help them, and they don't have a good mix between work and life. These bad feelings last for a long time and are seen as stable and out of their control parts of their work surroundings. Even though the person has had bad experiences at work, they may feel a sense of loyalty or responsibility to their job or workplace, even though it makes them feel bad. In both cases, emotional attachment is based on the idea that the causes of feelings are stable and easy to control. When people feel good about the same social things over and over again, they are more likely to feel emotionally attached to them. On the other hand, negative feelings about social objects can also cause effective attachment if they are seen as stable and hard to manage. The effective theory of social exchange gives a detailed account of how different feelings show up and what role they play in judging the results of social exchanges. People have said that the core ideas of social exchange theory are not well explained or put together. This limitation makes it harder to explain things and make predictions. The list of constructs in the theory isn't complete, and some of them overlap. This means that it only gives partial answers for how people act. Because the theoretical principles aren't clear, their conceptual boundaries can be interpreted in different ways, which leads to different research results. The fact that constructs aren't clearly defined makes it hard to draw conclusions and repeat research results. The words that are used in social exchange theory are also a weakness. Social and business exchanges were often called transactions in the original works, but it's still not clear whether an exchange is a type of relationship or a transaction that leads to a relationship. The theory's basic ideas are even harder to understand because the rules of exchange aren't always the same or clearly defined from one study to the next. The theory also has problems with how ideas are put to use and how they are organized. In writing, good and bad things are often shown in too simple a way without a critical understanding of their valence. Also, the structure of reciprocity is one-dimensional and doesn't take into account the activity dimension which tells the difference between positive or negative behavior that is actively shown and behavior that isn't shown. These problems show that social exchange theory needs to be looked at and improved more. As researchers, it's important for us to examine the theory's assumptions in a critical way and get a fuller picture of how people act in social relationships. Social exchange theory gives us important information about how social ties work. It helps us understand how benefits, resources, how people depend on each other, and how people treat each other affect how people act in groups. The effective theory of social exchange goes into more detail about how feelings affect these things. We appreciate your time today. I want to encourage you to learn more about the criticisms and limits of social exchange theory and to have serious conversations about how it could be improved.